It's always important to uh, start from the ground up when you're beginning something new and especially in 3D I think it's essential to appreciate the past and what's been done and how we've got to where we are today really. So what I'll be doing is introducing a brief history on 3D animation, how it's evolved and how it's progressed really very quickly over the last few years. And then I'll be giving you an introduction to 3D Studio Max and looking at the interface, outlining some key components and some useful terminology in order to get you started in this application. So where did it already kind of begin? Well, we saw in Tron 1982 some very early primitive graphics and this was really the first attempt to use 3D graphics in a major motion picture. So it's not the first time it was ever introduced, it's just the first time we'd really seen it introduced in an effective way. And we can see that the effects are rather simple and they're quite stylized, very simple geometric shapes and basic Lambert shading. Then moving on we see the adventures of Andre and Wally B and this was 1984 and this was uh, actually developed by John Lasseter who heads up Pixar now and in fact Disney as well and this was uh, really to show that 3D could be used to develop the same squash and stretch and timing, the same kind of animation that we would see in uh, traditional Disney, Disney animations. Now back in the day they didn't think 3D could do this, so Lasseter's aim was to show that it could be done. Young Sherlock Holmes, 1985, this is where we saw the the, the first use of photorealistic 3D rendering and again this was produced by Lasseter and I think they did a really really effective job and you consider how old this is and really it's quite creepy yeah we, we, we see better these days but it was a great step forward in the use of 3D in films now we've all seen Luxo Jr. 1986 we see the two lamps moving around this was Pixar's first attempt at producing a, a short film to show what they could do with their technology, what their software and their hardware was able to do. And it was kind of a proof of concept. Let's see if we can bring life to these inanimate objects, these desk lamps. And they really did a great job. And of course, these lamps are used as their trademark now in their Pixar logo. The Abyss, 1989. The first attempt at photorealistic liquid or water simulation trying to produce something that looked as if we had this alien life form that was controlling and manipulating water and we get this photorealistic attempt at reproducing the main character's face hopefully you've all seen Terminator 2 1991 and again we're moving forward this time this idea of liquid metal and again trying to reproduce photorealistic effects and how we can integrate the live footage you see the ironworks and all of the, the, the molten metal reflecting in the metal there Jurassic Park 1993 originally they were going to use uh, stop-motion or traditional animation in fact they were going to use a technology known as go motion and then right at the last minute they were wowed with the use of 3D animation and they said you know what we can do this we can introduce 3D animation and we should have all of our dinosaurs using this technology and they really did a fantastic job and it, it sold me that's for sure Toy Story 1995 now this is kind of the benchmark for 3D animation this was the first ever fully animated 3D feature film. Back in the day, everything that was rendered in 3D tended to look a little bit plasticky and a little bit shiny, so they thought, let's make a, a movie about toys. These are plastic and shiny. Then Star Wars, Episode 1, 99, we saw the introduction of the first fully animated character being integrated with live actors. We have the incredibly annoying Jar Jar Binks, a uh, horrible, annoying character, but really good use of 3D. The Iron Giant 1999. If you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend you check it out. This was the, uh, the combination of both traditional 2D animation and 3D animation. 3D was very, very good and still is good at producing this kind of robotic, 
very angular movements. And so it geared itself nicely towards robots and the idea of technology, combined with uh, some very nice traditional 2D animation with the characters. Final Fantasy 2001, well it was a pretty horrible storyline but some fantastic animation use of motion capture and some good um, photorealistic rendering and what this proved if anything was that you needed a good story, you couldn't just rely on the graphics. Two Towers 2002, well this was the the first time that a fully animated CG character uh, won an award. They, they introduced a new category and this won Best Animated Character. We saw Gollum here producing a, a, a really fantastic use of facial animation, um, blend shapes, etc. And then more modern, well, modern when I first made this video, use of 3D. We're seeing kind of this combination of photorealistic animation and uh, stylized animation. So we're starting to see a blend and you can see that it's getting uh, ever more exciting and ever more adventurous. Let's get started then by looking at 3D Studio Max and a general overview of the interface and some key components to look out for. So when you first get started and load up the software you'll see this welcome screen and this has some uh, essential skills movies that are definitely worth looking at. Uh, this is kind of a nice uh, way to quickly get started with the software. If you don't want to see this each time though you can just uncheck this box in the left hand corner and close the window. And then because we're using the student version you'll have to click continue to bypass the initial welcome message. So at first the interface might seem a little daunting but the truth is you only really need to learn um, a few concepts to get started. And another thing to note is that there are several ways to achieve the same thing when you're working in 3D Studio Max or indeed any software, any 3D software. So I might show you one method of doing something and there's another way to do it or another way to access that command. So you've really just got to go with um, what becomes familiar and convenient for you. So let's look at the main components that make up the software then. We'll start by looking at the main toolbar at the very top. And this is standard to most applications that you'll use. And the only real difference is that the uh, file menu has been replaced with this application button in the top left hand corner. And this is where you'll find um, typical commands like save and import, etc. And you'll be taken through um, edit menus, uh, tool menu, group, etc, etc. And you'll essentially use the relevant menu according to what it is that you want to do. So if you're wanting to do some uh, modeling, for example, you might use the, the modifier menu. Or if you want to do some rendering, if you've finished your, your model, you can use the rendering menu. So you use the menu set that's relevant to what you're actually trying to do. Now, because there are so many commands, what you'll notice are that uh, you'll have sub-menus that are located underneath the main menus as you scroll through these options. And a number of these are grayed out by default and that's because they only become active when you're actually able to use these options. So, for example, I've got nothing to do with hair and fur in my system so I can't use any of those options. You'll also note that there's this quick access toolbar up here at the very top of the screen and these are just um, extremely uh, useful actions. Uh, for example, undo and redo. These are some of my best friends because I'm using them all the time. So uh, do make use of these to help speed up operations. Next let's talk about the toolbars that you'll find in 3D Studio. So the main toolbar sits just underneath the main menu bar at the top of the screen and these buttons really represent shortcuts or quick access to a number of the features that you'll find underneath the main menu items and really it's just a way to um, enable you quick access to these items so that you don't have to find them buried underneath these menus. Now there's more than just the main toolbar that's available to you and what's really cool in 3D Studio Max is that it's um, the layout of the application is heavily customizable so you don't have to stick with what you're initially given. So what we can actually do is undock this main toolbar just by clicking and dragging on these two vertical lines in the, in the left hand corner. And if you drag it away from where it's docked and let go, 
you'll actually create what's known as a floating toolbar so you can actually move these around or put them on a different screen uh, whatever you prefer and if you'd like to dock it perhaps dock it somewhere else you can drag it to a new location and you'll see that the um, the outline changes and you can dock it to that new position and if I would like to put it back where it initially was I can simply undock it and then move it back to where it was initially docked now if you'd like to bring up um, other toolbars which are actually available but are hidden by default you can actually right click again on these two vertical vertical lines and you can see all of the other toolbars that are available to you now a quick way to show all of them at once is to go to your customize menu select show UI and then you'll see this option here for show floating toolbars and when you check that everything comes up at once so that's a quick way to get an overview of what's available to you now obviously I wouldn't recommend that you keep these all up at the same time unless you have a lot of screen real estate to work with so you can just go back to customize show UI and then uncheck show floating toolbars to hide them again and if you want to bring them up one by one you can just right click on those two vertical bars and bring up the toolbar that's uh, most useful to you at that point point. and again these can be docked wherever is convenient to you so use the toolbars as uh, a means of quick access to frequently used features within 3D Studio now what you'll notice is some of these uh, buttons actually have these little uh, black arrows in the lower right hand corner and this is similar to uh, toolbars in an application like uh, Adobe Photoshop and what they're doing is they're actually grouping um, similar icons underneath um, one masked icon to essentially save space so if you hold down on one of these icons you'll see that uh, similar but slightly different options are available underneath so you can select the one that's relevant to what you're trying to do at that particular time also if you start to forget what these are because sometimes the images can be a little a little bit confusing if you hover over any of these icons you'll get these tooltips so select and rotate select and move and select an uniform scale and these tooltips are really useful for reminding you what these buttons are also you'll notice that down here at the very bottom of the screen as I'm hovering over any of these icons I'm getting uh, slightly more information that's helpful to tell me what this action will do once I click it one thing that's uh, worth noting about 3D Studio is that like other applications like Maya um, it's got so many features and buttons that it requires a minimum resolution of I would say no less than 1280 uh, in the width and so what you'll notice if I just lower down the size of my window you'll see that I can't fit all of these buttons in view but if you carefully um, navigate over this toolbar you'll see that it turns into a hand and I can actually scroll these buttons left and right so you shouldn't feel like that you're limited just because of your resolution it is possible to uh, get back to where you can see any of the options that are available to you so what do we actually have available to us in this initial main toolbar well we have these uh, link items for linking objects together uh, selection tools which should be pretty familiar by now and you'll have different variations of these buried in your flyout menus um, move rotate and scale tools for when you actually start adding objects to your 3d scene snapping tools are very useful when you want to uh, easily place objects on your grid and then you have these uh, toggles which actually open up sub menus such as your curve editor or over here we have um, access to our rendering uh, windows which allow us to see the final renders when we finished our scene. Next we have the modeling ribbon which is an extended set of uh, features that are available to you when you're actually um, modeling uh, in 3D Studio and you can show and hide this ribbon by using this what's known as the graphite modeling tools which is what is actually located on this ribbon now by default when you click on each of these options nothing really pops up so what you actually have to do is double click on one of these tabs to bring up the, the shortcut icons 
and what you might notice is that there isn't really you know much to look at by default and the reason for that is because these menu sets will grow and shrink according to um, the object that you actually have selected so if I start out by creating um, you know a box in my 3d view and then go ahead and select that and turn it into uh, let's see let's apply a an edit poly modifier on there suddenly I'm able to apply all these different um, uh, operations onto this model now that I've made it editable so you can see how um, all of these tools are very useful and easy to access and they become they really kind of come into their own once you actually start modeling something next we'll look at the command panel which is on the right hand side of your screen and this is uh, something you should get to know and love it's something you'll be using frequently because this is where you access many of the controls when you're working within uh, 3d studio max so for example um, we have a number of different uh, categories along the top of these tabs here uh, if you hover over them you get the tooltips and you can see we've got create modify hierarchy motion display and utilities and so for example the create uh, offers up these shortcuts to items that you'll find underneath the create menu so you can create a box for example and then click and drag to create that item and then once you've created something you'll probably want to go ahead and use the modify tab and this is where you apply any number of modifiers to your object to affect the way it looks the way it behaves and essentially what you can do with the object to turn it into something that you're after. Underneath the um, tabs you'll see the actual contents of that particular section and what you'll see are what are referred to as rollouts and these are just uh, groupings of uh, well we'll say parameters in this case and you can minimize or maximize these groupings by clicking on the little minus and plus symbol and this essentially um, saves you space when you're looking through all the different options that are available to you and some of these categories have so many of these parameters that um, you'll actually need to scroll up and down to see through them all and so you'll get a little scroll bar that will appear on the right hand side of these of the command panel and if you want to save space you can just click to minimize these rollouts and save space. Now another thing to note is that you're not confined to just this uh, area on this command panel and if you have the screen real estate you can actually hover over the left hand side of the panel and you can actually expand or contract the command panel to your liking so that you have access to all of the features that are available to you at once so uh, take a good look through the command panel and start to familiarize yourself with the various things that are available to you lastly we have the lower interface bar that you'll find here at the bottom of the screen uh, this has uh, controls that are useful specifically for animation um, so here we have the uh, time slider and this is how you uh, slide through your various frames when you're actually doing some animation. You can use these little arrows to click through one frame at a time so that's pretty useful. Underneath that you'll find the track bar and this is where you'll be able to see keys that you've added once you start saving um, positions at particular keyframes when you're doing animation. And to the left here you have this little mini curve editor which is useful again when you're doing animation. At the bottom left here we have a little input area to enter Max script and this is the scripting language that 3D Studio uses essentially to extend the functionality of the program and so you can enter in uh, various commands here. We have the status bar here and this shows you um, the status of currently selected items so that's very useful. And as I mentioned right at the bottom here we have the prompt line which is kind of a quick help to show you what to do next if you're unsure and to the right here we have key options which is when you're wanting to key items as I mentioned here you can see the keys that you set in the track bar here well this is actually how you control how you set the keys we have playback buttons here for playing and pausing playback of your time range and then in the very lower right hand corner we have uh, various shortcuts 
for controlling your viewports and manipulating your 3D cameras when you're actually modeling and looking around your 3D interface. Next let's talk about the largest and most important area of the screen which is the viewports that you actually do all of your modeling and animating in and texture setup in and the viewports are these four views that you see by default and what we're actually seeing are a number of virtual cameras that allow us to look at the objects that we're modeling so in the top left hand corner we have the top view so looking down on the object then the bottom left hand corner we have the left view the front view and here we have the perspective view now these three views here are orthographic views so that they're, they're technically 2D without perspective and this view here is actually a perspective view which shows um, objects getting smaller and uh, essentially diminishing as they approach the vanishing point. Now we can actually navigate these views and move them around and we'll talk more about this later on as we start modeling but to give you a quick heads up we can actually rotate our view round using these controls down here in the bottom right hand corner so you'll see this orbit uh, control which allows me to rotate my view and you'll see the pan view control which is this little hand and then you'll see the uh, field of view or the zoom control which allows me to to zoom in and out of my objects now this is a uh, you know it's a good way to start but to be honest with you it's not the best way to navigate your viewports you really want to start making good use of shortcut keys to do this and um, the shortcut keys are alt and middle mouse button brings that rotate option back allows us to rotate our virtual perspective camera around control and middle mouse button allows us to pan up and down left and right moving that virtual camera around then holding down control and alt together with a middle mouse button allows me to click and drag and zoom in and out of my 3D view. So definitely get used to using those uh, keyboard shortcuts as they're much more effective than using these buttons down here in the lower right hand corner. Uh, a new addition to 3D Studio is this view cube here and this is kind of a, an interactive approach at allowing you to control your virtual camera. If you click and hold on this view cube you can actually rotate around which is kind of nice and you can see these little words written on here allow you to change to different views so I can change to my front view I can click and rotate it around again change to my top view and what's really nice is this little north, east, south, west which uh, is very easy to see which way you're looking in 3D space. Uh, once you've selected to, for example, a top view, you can actually use these little arrows to quickly rotate your camera around in 90 degree increments, which is also really nice. Um, it's also worth noting that you can do commands like uh, control and middle mouse in your orthographic view to pan these 2D views around, or control, alt and middle mouse to zoom in and out. Um, 3D Studio also lets you alt and left click, uh, sorry, alt and middle click to rotate your orthographic views around, though this is a little cumbersome, um, it's a little confusing because it's not true perspective. So if ever you lose one of your views, it's really easy to get it back by um, selecting the viewport you want to change and you can just do that by right clicking in any viewport and you can see it's active by the little yellow outline that appears and so if I want to get my uh, front view back I can just hit the F key that changes to the front camera or if I want to have another top view I can hit the T key to get the top or L to get to left so it's really easy to customize these cameras now it's quite difficult to work in these little viewports so what you'll typically want to do is um, actually maximize this to the full viewing area while you're working in a particular view and so the way you do this is to right click to select the viewport you want to maximize and you can hold down alt and tap w so that's alt and w to maximize the view and then you can use it in uh, just like you normally would and alt and w will also minimize that view so you get back to the 4-up view. So play around with the viewports and get used to using these shortcuts for navigating 
um, your virtual cameras around they're very important and they help you be more efficient in the software lastly I'd like to talk about um, if you remember earlier on I, I mentioned that you can do the same thing in 3D Studio uh, in many different ways and it depends on your own preferences well one of the things I should talk about are quad menus and if you right click in any of your viewports you'll bring up this additional menu set which has again these uh, useful features so for example we only have two of the four quad menus up at the minute and that's because it depends what you have selected what you're interacting with essentially what you're trying to do um, according to which of these menus pops up and what options are available to you so by default we've got move rotate scale etc but if I actually go ahead and create something like a box in my scene and then start interacting with that box to uh, convert it to an editable mesh when I right click on that object now I've unlocked a whole load of additional features so I can start to interact with this object in a host of different ways so quad menus are essential when you, you, you start getting more comfortable with the software and you start relying less on these quick access buttons or these kind of nested menus and you, you become confident with what it is you're trying to do and you need quick access to these frequently used commands finally then where do you go if you need additional help well Autodesk products are really great because they have an extensive help section in all of their products and this is really easy to get hold of it's just under the help menu and you can just do Autodesk 3D Studio Max help and it loads up the uh, help information in uh, an online version of the document and you can access um, any number of features within 3D Studio you can go to an index you can do a search what I really like is the fact that you have what's known as the info center at the top here if you wanted quick information on something so say for example the edit mesh modifier you could just type that in do a search and it automatically takes you to the online help and brings up um, information uh, uh, that's relevant to the search that you've you've queried so definitely check out the help section especially if you're unsure about something um, and when in doubt you can always go to Google uh, there's plenty of great tutorials online so this has just been a, a brief overview on the general interface for 3D Studio Max and uh, some of the things to get you started uh, where to look for useful uh, buttons toolbars quad menus etc so if you have any additional questions please don't hesitate to contact me and thank you very much for watching.